let's apply these scientific measurement principles to some practice problems. Equations and graphs gives us information about trends and patterns, so stop the video and answer these two questions. The answer for A is A. For graph A, as x decreases, y also decreases. Graph B is inverse proportional, so as x decreases, note that y increases. Let's apply these proportions to density, so stop the video and answer these questions. To get the answer, let's start with the equation for density. Each cube has the same mass. Cube A has the larger volume, so that means cube A has the smaller density because density and volume are inversely proportional. So cube B is more dense because smaller volume means larger density, keeping mass the same. This is an interesting story, so stop the video and answer this question. The uncertainty in the number 60 is in the tens place. Remember, 60 is a non-decimal number, so we do not include the 0 after the 6 as significant. So that means the uncertainty in the dinosaur bones is plus or minus 10 million years. Let's compare these two numbers and which number has the larger uncertainty. Stop the video and think about that for a minute. For the answer, I'm going to circle the uncertain digit for each number. And then look at the units. Note that a million miles is much larger than a picometer, so the answer is 0.25 million miles has the larger uncertainty compared to 74 picometers. There's gold in Nevada, so stop the video and try this question. And here's the answer. Start with 125 tons per truck, convert to the amount of gold per truck, and then convert from the amount of gold to dollars, and the answer is, that's a lot of work for about two ounces of gold. Nanoscience and nanotechnology are hot topics right now. A nanometer is very small. So based on this information, how big is one hydrogen atom? Stop the video and figure this out. So this is another conversion. One nanometer is the size of 20 hydrogen atoms, so one hydrogen atom is 0 0.05 nanometers. Food labels tell us what we're eating, so from fat-free to low sodium to high fiber, all that is information about our health. The recommended daily amount of sodium is 1,500 milligrams per day, so stop the video and answer this question. So we can set up another conversion. In this conversion, note that the milligrams of sodium cancels out leaving us with the units of cups per day. Fats are classified as saturated fats and unsaturated fats. Saturated fats are solids, unsaturated fats are liquids. The recommended daily allowance of saturated fat is 12 grams per day. So stop the video and answer this question. We can get the answer by doing another conversion. When we set up our conversion, note that the grams of saturated fat cancels out, leaving us with two-thirds of a burrito per day. I didn't realize that a Starbucks mocha has so much saturated fat, so stop the video and answer this question. So do another conversion. Again, grams of saturated fat cancels out leaving us with 0.8 pentis per day that we can drink to meet the RDA for saturated fat. Some of you have taken a biology class, so you know how human bodies are made. You take some arms, legs, torsos and heads, put them in a pot, turn on the reactor, and out comes a human body with this chemical formula, A2L2T1H1. You know that the coefficients in a balanced chemical equation tells us the number of each reactant, or in this case body part, to make one body. So stop the video and answer this question and that question. And the answers are, here is our conversion factor. And for the second reaction, here is the conversion factor. The coefficients in the balanced chemical equation allows us to predict, by doing conversion, how much reactants react and how much products form. If you're watching what you eat, the food label gives us a lot of nutrition information. So stop the video and answer these questions. And the answers are, 
to convert from mass to calories, we need to know the number of calories in one gram of that biomolecule. Here are the conversion factors. Based on the measured masses of fat, carbs, and protein, we can apply significant figures rules to round the number of calories. For part B, we want to figure out whether the company reported the total number of calories correctly using significant figures. When applying significant figures rules in calculations, do not round until you get to your final answer. So that's why I used these unrounded numbers here to calculate the 200 calories. This calculation shows that the company did not report the number of calories correctly. And for part C, the company did report the number of fat calories correctly. Many of the calculations we do in chemistry involve conversions, so practice those conversions.